bring a beauty in the world, yeah! Yes, 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 yes. Oh my God. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen! You're watching the ARE Truck Caps Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend. Brought to you live by Toyota. First thing Sunday morning, championship day, and we got one giant storyline we are working today, and many others as well. The big one, of course, can Kevin Van Dam put away win number 21. 12 anglers out there on the water, ready to hit Toledo Bend for one more day to decide this championship. And uh, frankly, we're watching to see if KVD can win. All right, I got a heck of a surprise this morning. My family drove all the way from Gunnersville last night. They stayed at the hotel up here at Cypress Bend. I had no idea, and they came here this morning. So I guess a little more incentive to catch uh, one, two, three, four, five big ones. There's his nearest pursuer. Took a little whack to the head right little there. Little kid took a whack to the skull. <laughs> that was nice. Happens. There's his nearest pursuer, of course. And here's the rest of them as we watch him. Hank Cherry and Ish Monroe getting warmed up and ready to go before 6.15 a.m. this morning. Right there at Cypress Bend Park in Toledo Bend. One more day of fishing. Twelve anglers out there and Kevin Van Dam trying to hold them off for one more day. We're coming to you from the Toyota Bassmaster Studios. Of course, Toledo Bend, about five hours south of here on the border between Texas and Louisiana. And of course, that's the elephant in the room, KVD. That's all everybody thinks about at this tournament because it's been a while since he's won one. No doubt about it. And I think I think really one of the most interesting things that happened at the, the day three weigh-in was Kevin Van Dam did not have a limit up until the last four to five minutes of competition yesterday and then comes in with a giant bag of fish and actually extends his lead. But with that being said, you know, talking to Kevin last night, he said, look, man, I caught five barely all day long. And, and I, here's what's weird. The guy has 75 pounds of bass, basically, <laughs> and is still on a very, very fragile deal. Fragile, you think it's, it's he's one of the least safe bets of all the approaches these guys are taking? As far, it's quite obvious as far as numbers go, it's the most fragile way guys are. Because just for the simple fact that guys like Hank Cherry and, and Chris Lane are catching numbers. All right. Well, you were right. He didn't catch 25 pounds yesterday. He came within about four ounces of that. What else happened yesterday at the weigh-in? Hey, Mike Sukai, yeah, okay. Before we get to the weigh-in, Mike Sukai in the house. Suit, you've been catcher. dropping nuggets all morning long. I hope you continue that all day long. <laughs> <laughs> he has not. Has That's he right. not? That's right. Let's keep the flow of information going. Sticks. He'll have a lot of help out there. We'll get to those guys a little bit later. But right now, let's take a look at the weigh-in on day number three. 50 anglers out there, and these are the ones that advanced in fine fashion, including Paul Mueller, the angler from Connecticut, Candlewood Lake guy who we got to know very well at the Classic at Gunnersville. I caught my largest bass in two two times now because eight two was my largest prior to here in this event. What a lake, dude. I mean, it's it's amazing. There's giants in here, and, and I feel like I'm on vacation, so. Hey, good to see Paul Mueller back in the mix. Somebody who's been in the mix all week long. Definitely has something going very strong. Anchored by fish like this. Really three different techniques that have all been working for Hank Cherry. I mean, you can catch these fish on this lake from two inches of water to 20 foot, however you want to fish. I mean, I have people following me cheer me on, riding by, this, that, and the other. I mean, it was great. Y'all been so wonderful. I hope I get to do it one more day. Maybe we can catch some more. Thank you. Hank Cherry, this is really not a big numbers lake, but every time we could get a signal from Ish Monroe, you say he was catching a fish or two. He was catching a few more fish than everyone else. A lot of success. 24-10 on day number two, and backed it up with 22 pounds and four ounces on day number three. So Ish Monroe is poised. He's a little ways back, but he could get it done. There's so many big fish in it, you never know what could happen. You know, I had a 13 pound lead at one point and lost all of it except for 10 ounces. So, you know, that's fishing for you. But you see my voice has gone from screaming and yelling because I was catching so many fish today, just pumped up and fired up. I had a, two Red Bulls, a five hour energy. I was so blown out today, I blew out my flip flop today. I was setting the hook so hard. Yeah, well, you're not the only one that had a day like that yesterday. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> this guy. And probably the biggest nemesis to Kevin Van Dam. We've said it all week long. Chris Lane fishing the way he likes. A little bit of a slip yesterday, but not that much of a slip wing in 21-3. You know, just fired up. I'm ready to go out there and, you know, I'm, I'm battling against the best fisherman in the world with Kevin Van Dam. And, you know, no matter what he's done, 
or what he hasn't done, he's still coming full speed ahead. So you have to go 110%, and all the guys behind me, you got to go full speed. So tomorrow, you know, I'll probably stay a little bit further south, a little bit longer, trying to bust that 30-pound bag. Chris Lane is the guy with the most wins in the last five years on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Here's the guy with the most wins all time. No one else even close. KVD, can he hold it together another day? 74 pounds and 12 ounces. Boom, shaka laka, giant bass. Um, you know, I may not be able to uh, catch much at all tomorrow, and I, and I can tell you I can really easily go out and catch 30 or 35 pounds, too, the way I'm fishing. You just... It, it's such a timing deal. Uh, today was really bad conditions for what I'm doing. There's really no water movement at all, no wind or anything like that. So I'm open for a little bit of a weather change tomorrow. And it uh, looks like we got one coming, so we'll see. It's going to be fun. I, I can tell you this. You're going to want to keep your eyes glued on Bassmaster Live tomorrow. We'll be watching it today, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And those five anglers that we just saw there, in fact, all 12 of these guys, have done something pretty special. As you said yesterday, Mark Zona, this is a great lake, an unbelievable place, a legendary place, but it is not easy to crack. Not You can't just go there any time and knock out the totals like this. No, and it's also kind of that in-between time of year where you've got fish, you know, moving offshore, leaving a lot of the areas, guys that are fishing shallow, but the one thing that is keeping a lot of those bass up shallow is our higher water level this time around. Paul Mueller, one of the guys we're following today. A great day, number three for him. Hank Cherry hanging in there all week long in Ish Monroe. That fabulous day, number two. Can he replicate something like that today? He'll have to. He wants to take the win here. Chris Lane, the guy you said, the most dangerous guy to watch. Does that carry on into today? Hey, you got guys that are fishing their strength. Chris Lane is one of the best topwater fishermen on earth, going against one of the best offshore fishermen in Kevin Van Dam. I mean, what else can you ask for on the final day? <laughs> Absolutely. We got it all working today. Hopefully get you some Kevin Van Dam pictures very soon. We're going to go out first to Hank Cherry go live. Go detour this morning. Ain't going nowhere. Good morning to Christian and Bella. Kids at home, I know you're watching. Daddy's not doing too good this morning. <laughs> but in a way, Daddy's doing real good because he's going to see you tomorrow regardless. Oh, yeah. Trying to see if I just can't get something a little different. Hank tell the kids they're a little slow for pops this morning. 
but uh, he could get it going. We know that he's capable of getting anything going today. We saw him get started even a little before this time table yesterday. This was early yesterday. I think Jerry's been really concentrating in the San Miguel area of, Ta of Toledo Bend, and the reason why there was a big tournament there about a week ago, and he said, I know a lot of the fish I'm catching are retreads from that big tournament, and he's concentrated on that shad spawn every single morning. The first day of this tournament, when the wind was really up in that area, he was able to catch him on a chatterbait. He's gone to an ER Jigs 916 ounce with a Zoom Super Chunk trailer. But that right there, those bigger fish, he's been catching flipping after he fishes that shad spawn. Yeah, that big one was the game changer for him yesterday. Really got him fired up and made sure he's looking to get about four of those in the boat today because he'll need something along those lines to catch up with the likes of Chris Lane and Kevin Van Dam. And really, he's had three deals going on. The shad spawn deal in the morning, then about three hours of just flipping. Just flipping bushes, flipping trees, and then he'll go to Main River Docks where he thought his Main River Docks, Main Lake Docks, were, were going to be his biggest player for Giants from what he's seen in practice, and nobody was fishing them. He said, look, I had some seven to nine pound fish follow me out from those docks. So really, it's been a three-prong approach all week long for Hank Cherry. This tournament has represented sort of rejuvenation for Hank Cherry, who's gone through a couple of uh, relatively lean years after really busting in 2013, big time Bassmaster Elite Series. So 18 pounds and 12 ounces yesterday, just a pound less than he had on day number two. Cherry trying to say stay solid today, and again need some home runs today, of course, to uh, to get into the conversation for winning the tournament. But uh, hey, on Toledo Bend, every cast you never know what's going to happen. Again, he said this is like the first tournament he's ever devoted this sort of effort, this sort of time to, to actually flipping. So a uh, pretty good debut for that technique for him. Back to Hank Cherry Live. It'll be something to see one crash it back there this morning. Any of them. Somebody pay attention. by the jackets and in some cases the long pants. It's a little bit cooler, a little bit breezier than it was yesterday. Very hot, very flat. Uh, Kevin Van Dam cited that as one of the reasons it was so Don't brutally tough there. yesterday. Got to see Hank Cherry throwing that ER jig quite a bit yesterday, um, and really swimming that jig on these docks, not letting it get to the bottom. Uh, Nine sixteen huh. ounce Zoom Super Chunk trailer, and a, a big, yeah, big time off. Carolinas deal right mm. there from the, the lakes he fishes. Yeah, Norman, so forth. I think Menendez called him part of the Lake Norman gang. Yes, who are, who are dock uh, marauders for sure.
Paul Mueller fishing across from our takeoff about mid lake and fishing on the Texas side, really in the same creek that Randall Tharp caught him a few years ago. Okay. Paul Mueller way offshore throwing a uh, Strike King 10XD like Van Dam. Hold on, this might hurt. It's going to hit right there. You holding on? We got to go. We're good. We're good. Thomas Allen is out on Kevin Van Dam. Reported he just caught his third fish. It's a nice one, three to four pounds. Mm. Okay. And and does he have one? And and I know a lot of people probably want to get out with Kevin Van Dam and Chris Lane as soon as we get any kind of signal. Uh, we will be with him. We're we're waiting as much as you are. Um, does he have two in the boat that are between three and four pounds? I, that's yes, I believe that is the case. First one was around three. No, his first one was small. Right, small. Pound and yeah, second one was near three. I mean, we have the dual entry KVD caught a five pounder at eight thirty nine. We have two of those in bass track, so there's going to be some. Incorrect information. What, what do we there have them at? Total, for, so total you, is uh, three for eleven five. And so that's with the double got, punch or without the double. That's punch. with the double punch. So take five off. Yeah, maybe, but <laughs> it's <laughs> it's very exact science. We're dealing no, it's with not. Here. I don't. We're, uh, so he has somewhere between five and ten pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Just wanted to make sure. I think we should take on the Zika virus later, <laughs> since our science is so strong. We're doing well here. Oh my gosh. I went down that shoreline with a jerk bait just to see if they're up shallow. The white bass are in different places than they were, so stuff is moving. I'm going to have to just keep trying to figure out where they're at and try different things. I'm thinking that they're probably schooling. And if maybe the wind dies down, which I don't know if it will, I might be able to get them on top water. Because it was pretty fast and furious there. When it, and it was the sun was out yesterday, so. Thanks, man. But it's been different every day. You know, I've uh, caught my big fish cranking a 6XD and a 10XD. Most of them have been on the 10XD. I think they're eating the 10XD because there's a lot of yellow bass around where I'm fishing, and they're about the same size. There's something that just came up schooling right there. And so, I mean, as big of, of a plug as this looks, it's really not that big compared to what they're eating. Plus, I'm snagging up some type of eggs. I don't know if it's white bass eggs or yellow bass. Those something down there, or it could even be shad. I mean, something down there spawning. And I think that's why those big females, they know where the food source is. And like that eight pounder I caught yesterday, it still, it still had a bloody tail. So, I mean, it just literally pulled out here. So. And this is basically just a point that comes off. There's a bunch of pockets in there. The channel swings up real close to it. And so the thing is, like, for the most part, most of my fish have been coming on a real steep, sharp drop adjacent to a point or a flat. With the exception of I, had, I have one flat that had uh, some high spots on it that were adjacent to ditches that ran through the flat. They weren't in the ditches, they were on the high spots, so it's kind of weird. You would think that they'd pull in the ditches, but they were on those high spots. And, uh, you know, this spot is kind of a special spot. It's a big fish spot. I don't know how many are here, but I've got a, at least one big one every day. Two big ones on the second day. And uh, if I could get five of what lives here, that's the bag I need for today, and I think I'm just going to try to 
go with it. I mean, that's all you can do. I mean, the only way you're going to have a shot today is catch a 30-pound bag. Paul Mueller there laying it out for us. We'll be watching him today. Unfortunately, right now we're having some trouble with the cell service. It's very sketchy down here. This is a remote part of the United States to be sure. We can't show you Chris Lane right now, but before we came on the air, we were getting some signal for him. He was in a bit of a different location, and we caught this. That bait right there, a whopper ploppers, caught the majority of his meat. Uh, and really the other bait that's been his potatoes, I mean, kind of the complement to that Whopper Plopper has been a kind of a Zara Spook type, type bait. Might be a Zara Spook. We don't have an exact, but uh, he has caught a lot of fish also this week on a walking bait. Oh, early. my God. Jeez. He's there. He's there. He's there. That was a hog. He'll come back. Let him take it. Golly, that was a hog, man. Those are the ones we got to make sure. I don't even know. I just so amped up, man, and I should have just left it there. But good thing is I might be able to come back there in about 20 minutes, fish it from that direction, and get that fish to bite again, I hope. Chris Lane, earlier today, all of this happened before we came on the air, including his five fish limit, which he put in the boat there for. Uh, somewhere in the region of 12 pounds, according to Bass Track. So Chris Lane had a lot of reason to have adrenaline going early on this final day. All right, we're going get to get updated on Chris Lane, whether we can see him. Ronnie Moore. Ron Moore. Ron Moore on the line right now. Ronnie, great. You're in the right place at the right time again. And we're going to rely, uh, rely on you to fill us in on what's going on with Chris Lane as we speak right now and your thoughts about that early limit of his. Yeah, guys, we uh, we started out on Chris Lane again, um, and we knew the shad small was going to be a big part of his game plan this morning. So we followed him right from takeoff, and he caught uh, four keepers in his first six casts this morning, and he, he put them on him pretty quick. And then he went a couple, uh, couple casts and caught short fish. And then about 15 minutes after he uh, caught his fourth keeper, he ended up poting his uh, his final fish of his limit, um, another solid fish. He has probably two, three to three and a half pounders at least. Um, they were solid, you know. They weren't real long and skinny like a lot of the post spawn fish have been. These these two fish this morning were uh, chunky, a little shorter, but they looked like they were full up from eating shad this morning and uh, this week. But uh, he's got three swimmers in the boat, you know, he measured all three of them so he's got three small fish but um right now he's been running and gunning some areas some you know small secondary points and some uh pockets that uh you know in the same vicinity trying to keep this shaft on by going on as long as he possibly can but um he switched up his game plan today every single day he's ran south um 15 20 minutes and uh this morning when he saw the wind the way it was he remembered day two was as rough and he didn't want to uh he didn't want to risk his area being blown out so he started close basically where he ended his day two when he caught his 23 15. he ended it um in this area so he decided to start today here and, and as we saw this morning he boated his five fish uh pretty darn fast i believe um only one other angler had caught it by the time he had his look at the boat and that was keith combs on you know one of his first casts of the day so uh Chris Lane paid off big time with the shads on. And, uh, uh, good about that is, he said he's catching numbers on the shads on in the morning, and it may be hard to believe, but 11:30 to 1:30, when the sun is high in the sky, that's when he's been getting his biggest fish of the day, and that's kind of odd for top water, most people would say, but Chris Lane's confidence in this later in the day is, is probably the strongest I've ever seen of somebody on a top water bite, but um. Normally where he can catch one, he can catch two or three, but it looks like he's pulling up the trail motor and he's about to head out. Um, Were you with him yesterday, Ronnie? Yes, sir. I was with him. Uh, I was with him day two and day three. Hey, Ron, if you can, uh, dial us in on the two baits that he's been bouncing back and forth on throughout the week. Uh, basically every morning, 
he's going to throw a spook. He's caught four keepers this morning on a spook, and his final keeper, which was a, a the quality, you know, another quality funnel lob flop. So he's throwing the Zara spook in, you know, bone color, and the River to Sea whopper flopper in bone color as well. And I think he's throwing the big whopper flopper, um, the bigger size. And yesterday morning he caught his limit before 7:15 all on a spook. This morning four of his five came on a spook, and uh, you know he's. He's trying to avoid that four-hour lull. Yesterday, he had a four-hour lull until he got his six-pounder or so, his giant fish from yesterday on the Waffle Flopper. So he's uh, he's running back to where he started the morning to see if he can catch a couple more. But, yeah, it's been two big baits for him this week, a, a Sarah Spook um, and a Waffle Flopper. Ronnie, uh, excellent as always. Ron Moore out there working hard on the water and, and staying with Chris Lane. Well, we can't get to him with our pictures today, but as he keeps moving, you know we'll pick up with him and we'll uh, we'll get you brought up to date and we'll have some good uh, some good pictures. And of course, if yesterday was any guideline, could be a few big ones in the future for Chris Lane. You said it yesterday. He's the guy to watch, and uh, that's the way it's turned out. He's the guy with the best shot at catching Kevin Van Dien. You just, just come on kind of had that vibe after really after the first day that Chris Lane I mean if you're going to have a topwater event and and somebody that's going to start to gain momentum you could hear it in Chris Lane's voice at at the weigh-ins every single day right. that he knew he was on the right gig <laughs> very very early in this event Do we have Keith Combs with two bass weighing 12 pounds yes. since Two six pounders. Wow. Tommy, I throw it to you, friend. Is this a two dog race? I don't think so. You don't? I don't think so. I mean, Are I'm. Are you being honest? I am being honest. I'm, I'm saying. Such? For, for Kevin Van Dam, there's a 35 pound possibility, and I think that's a possibility for maybe two or three others in this field today. Such? Four man race. It could happen. Hank Cherry could. Somebody just got to find two to eight to ten pounders and get up near thirty. And KVD struggled with twenty-one. I'm going to go with the two-man race. And a lot of people would say it's a one-man gig today. That <laughs> might be right. Yeah. Yeah. Wrapped might up. Be right. I think there's a lot of argument to be made for that. I, being that that one guy is Kevin Van Dam. I mean, the fact that he could stay with it, stick it out, and and wind up with what he wound up with yesterday shows that he's. Uh, He's pretty much dialed into what's available out there. Can we have the break? Can we? I think we can. We better, as far as I'm concerned. We need to get some more pictures coming in here, and we will do it. We will get there. Kevin Van Dam on top right now. Doing well today, 86 pounds. It's five pound lead, five pounds plus. Chris Lane, Keith Combs popping up in there. One of your favorites before this tournament started. There he was. Keith Combs. My pick uh, pick for the Derby. Going to give you props for that. Thanks, right, for However long it lasts. I we'll suck. be right back I after do. this. I suck. No, you don't. The ARE Truck Cabs Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend is brought to you by Lowrance, Toyota, Berkeley, Triton Boats, and by GoPro. 29 pounds, three ounces! Edwin Evers here, 2016 Bassmaster Classic Champion. In celebration of Lawrence winning the last five Bassmaster Classics, we're going to extend the ultimate upgrade promo. If you buy an HDS Gen 3 with Structure Scan 3D, we're going to mail you a $300 rebate. Five Bassmaster Classic Champions in a row. That doesn't happen by chance. That happens because these units are the best. Ultimate Predator has evolved again. Now Yamaha VMAX SHO Performance is prowling the waters in four hungry, exciting new models. With their four valves per cylinder and double overhead cam fuel injected design, these advanced four stroke Predators are taking performance to a whole new level. Vicious, lean, efficient. VMAX SHO, the pack is growing. 
your choice of fishing apparel can make or break your day out on the water. Added mesh vents for superior breathability. Moisture transport cooling technology to keep you dry and comfortable. And antimicrobial to keep you from smelling like your catch. With added SPF to keep you protected. We've added stain release to keep the blood or any other stains at bay. Our most technologically advanced fishing shirt for all the necessary dirty work. We were born to innovate, to find a better way. New Berkeley Hardbaits. New designs. Trigger loaded actions. Mind blowing colors. Because everyone wants to catch more fish. If you love bass fishing, then show your support by joining BASS today. Since 1968, BASS has been serving bass fishing enthusiasts with information and tournament coverage that make you a better angler. When you sign up today, you'll join over half a million outdoorsmen who love bass fishing. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Call us or log on to Bassmaster.com to join Bass now. Think you could win valuable prizes from Bassmaster? You can't know unless you enter, and entering is easy. Go to Bassmaster.com. Enter now for a chance to win a fishing trip with 2014 Geico Bassmaster Classic Champion Randy Howe. Trip includes airfare, hotel, rental car, and $500 cash, plus a Triton 17 TX bass boat with Mercury engine, and Randy's gear from Lowrance, Daiwa, Bass Pro Shops, and much more. You, the winner of a valuable prize, could be. All you have to do to get your shot is go to Bassmaster.com and enter today and every day. Hey, it could be you. You're watching the ARE Truck Caps Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend. Brought to you live by Toyota. Sunday morning, you're with us on probably one of the most watched days of the year so far. No question about that on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Incredible. The legendary Kevin Van Dam trying to hang on wire to wire wins his 21st victory with the Bassmasters. Got some strong pursuers, including Hank Cherry on the left. And this man, now we're getting pictures from him, Chris Lane on the right. Oh, I'm not worried. That was a good one back there. Man, it's been a great morning. Whoo! Uh, winds howling hard, 10 mile an hour probably at least, maybe 15 coming out of the northeast. Same direction it was blowing on the second day of the tournament. And where I started the first and the third day, you know, it, it's just three to five footers in there just crashing in there so I stayed close fished some points where I've caught fish late in the day and you know found first point I stopped on they were just it was happening right there caught uh, caught a bunch of fish caught five keepers now I know that I just have to try to call up and have to go big today you know Kevin averaging 25 pounds a day so I know that I have to catch everything I can and just go big all day long you know if I can catch a five pounder you know or a six pounder that keeps you keeps your confidence up and keeps it going I had one big one hit this thing early he didn't get the bait by a cypress tree so have to stay on it you know the the bite for this has been from 10:30 on we caught one good one on it this morning with the clouds and the overcast and the wind, you know, I'm going to throw it all day pretty much. Might flip a little bit. Might take that drop dead crawl and pitch it by some bushes, you know, if it gets, you know, calm around some points or something. But, you know, I'm trying to catch six and seven pounders in order to have a shot at this thing. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, this is the old whopper plopper and, uh, you know, I don't get many bites on it, but when I get one, it's a big one. And I've been just trying to stay on main lake points, main lake points with either cypress, cypress trees on it or grass. And, you know, if you got both like this, 
then it's a little better. And when you've got the wind, I think it cuts, you know, a little bit of visibility out there. So instead of them just following it or looking at it, they just explode on the thing. And hopefully today we'll have the same circumstances. <laughs> Heart throbbing. <laughs> it's like a mule kick. Pow, man, they just go. Oh, I hear you, Z says. Oh, I hear you. I can't get it. We're looking for old big. We need some old bigs. You know, you don't want too much wind, but a little wind is good. And you'll find that wind that's really good on the brakes, on the brakes of the points and little cuts where you don't have the waves, you got the little bit of a ripple. And these points, like this one right here, you can see how that grass point comes out a little farther than everything else. And that's has had a tendency to where those big fish have really exploded on this thing. You just never know when it happens either. It's just the anticipation is <laughs> Unbelievable. No, we haven't hit, we haven't gone there yet. Um, trying to time this out a little different today. You know, according to the weather, it's supposed to lay down this afternoon. You know, my, the big, big fish that I've caught, either in the tournament or in practice, have been, you know, pretty mid lake down. And, I'm going to really concentrate. I haven't been down there in the afternoon when this bite's really good because I'll catch them decent and then I come up here and I catch some five pounders and, you know, catch 23, almost 24 pounds the first two days. So really wasn't, I didn't want to take that risk of running all the way back down there. But today we have to let it all hang out. You know, I think it's going to help when these fish, you know, to me, it seems like the afternoon. Well, what's going to help today is, is the cloud cover, I think. Um, one of the things in the wind, you know, uh, it's like this is just like the second day of the tournament was. And it's one of those deals where when you have overcast skies, I think it has a tendency to keep the fish some of the bigger fish up shallow and and up feeding instead of them you know laying around and they get away from they don't hold real tight to the cover you know they'll have a tendency to be roaming around looking for bait or just milling around out there and i hope that we can put one of these in the box at five, five of them in the box. Oh, what, man? Tell you what, my wife and kids, dude, you know, this sport is, it's a fantastic sport. It's a dream come true, but you know, it's a lot of time on the road. It's a lot of, it's a lot of time away from your family and the support staff that I got at home with my wife and kids is unbelievable. And them little rugrats, they drove all the way last night. They didn't tell me. They drove all the way, got a room at Cypress Bend up there, and showed up at lunch this morning. So now, all day in the back of my head, it puts a little extra fire, you know, to, to win. You know, this win would be for them. You know, it wouldn't be for me, it'd be for them because I'm out here just having fun and catching giant Toledo Bend bass, doing my job with cypress trees wrapped all around my line. But uh, yeah, it was a surprise. And I'm glad they're here. Oh, am I glad they're here. Might have to just stay a couple of days if the principal let them out of school.
See, we're coming up to a key area right here on the right. Got cypress trees, grass point, wind blowing into it, coming out of a major feeder creek. It hasn't been successful so far, but it's set up right to be good with the wind blowing in it today. Live. And you got, you know, you see when we go live, it seems that it has helped the help the calls on a on a pretty big bite. So we can we'll see if we can't bring it bring it to you guys live right here in a really good spot. Actually after I caught that big one yesterday, you guys probably saw it live. I about threw the rod out of my hand. My wrist are about to give out, but the adrenaline, the emotion, you know, we're gonna, we'll make it through no problem all day. But <laughs> when you make those long casts like that and you get caught up in that grass, that's a long way to bring it back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, somebody that knows how to do math. You know those five in the box? When we were kids, my mom would call them, boys, any fish you catch before noon or double bass on Sunday morning? So, mama, I got five in there. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get those out. To, to what? Oh, oh, it's legal. Yeah. Yeah, she wants them all out of there. You know, you could probably be throwing, you know, I could be probably catching some fish on a spinnerbait, maybe flipping that drop dead crawl in there, you know, and put some two and three pounders in the box. But, you know, that is not going to do me any good at all. You know, I've got to catch fish in the six pound class range. And they've seemed to come off of this bait this week. Well, yesterday I didn't get as many bites, you know. I uh, I had some big ones though, and it starts out if it starts out really fast for me in the morning, then I think I I have the opportunity to really slow down and kind of kind of take a little bit more risk, you know. Today we're just all full blown risk now. Right I mean, we've got five moves. in the boat. Probably not gonna oh fall too much one way or the other, you know. Points are. Points are crucial right now for me, especially having a little bit of a slow year starting out. But um, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, blessed to be that. right where we're at. And That's you don't get these opportunities very often. And I hate to finish second. So we're going for the gusto today. You know, it doesn't matter, third, fourth, fifth. I'm not worried right about there. that. I'm worried about a couple more of these. One hey, spot. It's time right now, you know, late in the day is when I've been getting. Oh. <laughs> that was the best. Sorry.
He pretty much broke down his entire gig right there. I you cannot ask fan, for more than that. Fantastic to listen to all the while. You know that there's that chance any second each one of these casts. You know, and my wife looked at the photo galleries yesterday and the day before. Really, if you look at it, this is p potential daily limit info right here. If you look at the photo galleries and look at Chris Lane and his cameraman that's been with him all week, Eric Kafka, yeah, it appears with two children that may right have been here. separated at birth. No. Be Personality. No, I'm be careful. Be careful. Yeah, it's so deep uh, two here, great human and beings. Some of these fish may be way in the back. You could see Eric Kafka being a lame kid. There's no I doubt. Can see him. I, I mean, we've been listening. I mean, for many tournaments now, he could be a talk show host as well because he kind of <laughs> he kind of runs a talk show from that camera position in the back of the boat, and I I for one am thankful for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We got some freaky branches on there. We're heading back to Chris Lane. He had to take a little baby time out there for a second. What? We'll be back there okay. in a second. Good. Good to know. Lane here. Two guys, Edwin Evers and Chris Lane, have averaged a win a year for the past Sometimes six years. Sometimes when it gets over, that's right. Yeah. You know, you have to get in there, in that scattered grass, a little bit deeper. For the past six years, and some years. Uh, Chris Lane has turned into like a Denny Brower. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. He's headed that way. Like, no, yeah. Yeah, well, man, you know, trying to chase down Kevin Van Dam, um, I like that, I think, a little bit better. I'm a little hungrier to chase him down than if I, than if I was having have him chasing me. You know, every ounce counts in this sport, and you know, I'd love to have a five and a half pound lead, but there again, I wouldn't want the best bass fisherman chasing me down either. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. Uh, we just got to do our job today and fish as hard and as clean as we can and take the opportunity that we have in front of us and try to capitalize on it. Well, Kevin Van Dam, of course, the guy on Chris Lane's mind, and why wouldn't he be? Let it every day of this tournament, starting with day number 120, 29 plus pounds, including an eight pound, five ounce bass. Hey, everybody said that you got to catch a seven to nine pound bass every single day of this event to win it. You heard that in pre tournament. Go ahead, Such. Well, I got a, just got a blog in from Thomas Ooh. Allen, who is on. Kevin Van Dam said he's, he's trying to get his limit before he goes to his deep haunt. He's hit. You know, the wooden docks, and he caught a couple off a bunch of cypress trees and some grass lines. Chad Swan deal. He's still not moved yet, but he's hitting every angle and different presentations. And Three fish, do we have any I so just asked somewhat him unofficial to weight? to try to confirm and give us a better idea of his weight and see if we can adjust okay. it on Bass Track. Again, we have no we have no service on Close Kevin Van Dam. Right. Didn't, didn't you cover, Tommy, many, many years ago where we tried a format 
many years ago called the X Factor where we didn't show an angler. I remember <laughs> that. <laughs> I think what? I may have forced it out of my memory. It may be, it may be a recovered it. memory situation. Yes. I need to go through some therapy to get back to that. <laughs> We're going to call Kevin Van Dam the X Factor okay. until we have a picture. Well, again, you know, yesterday, five keepers all day long, but obviously they were the right ones and then the big bass of the day. Look at that eight pound, almost a nine pounder. That was it. I mean, that's this place. You've got to have one of those big ones. And the, uh, the absolute horrifying thing was Van Dam only catching, literally only catching five keepers all day long yesterday. But each bite that he gets on that shad spawn deal this morning uh, is one less fish he has to catch offshore. Well, it, it, I tell you what it does. It really makes me fish this a big bait. You know, it makes you fish a big bait the whole time. You know, I know that I've got to catch big ones today. And no matter what, any cast can be that explosion that can make a difference. I'm going to need a couple of them today. But I've got all day. I mean, you know, here it is. What, uh, yeah, and got a couple, I think we got maybe two, three and a half, four pounders in there, but, uh, we're going to need more than that, but yeah, you're, the the, in, well, there's, you know, I've found myself at certain times when I hit the, when I hit a grass point off of a point that really, really looks good, I'll find myself, you know, kind of in a state of shock, I guess. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. like oh, geez, is it going to happen? Because you just don't know. And after catching that almost, I guess it was almost seven pounds yesterday, and that thing tail walked. I mean, I think you got it on camera. Tail walked right to me. Like, just mad at, like he says, here, you can have this back. Thank goodness he stayed hooked up. But that's what, that's what we're dealing with out here in Toledo Bend. And they're mean, they're aggressive, so you know you're in for a battle. Yeah, when I get in those really key spots, I've, I've kind of made myself look away. If I know my cast is good and my line's not going to get hung up, especially by a cypress tree or something like that, then I'll just turn my head because I've, you know, the one this morning, you know, if I'd have, I don't know if I could have caught that one. One yesterday for sure. I saw him, it was about right there. I saw him coming up from the bottom. Fourth. Look at Paul Mueller out there who's been out, been in, doing that offshore thing pretty much since we picked him up today and probably was out there. And Kevin Van Dam, as, as we learn uh, from what Mike Sukon was telling us, not even out there yet. Or maybe no. in route out there as we speak right now. No, so. you know, and, and Kevin was able to exploit that Shad Spawn deal on the first day of the event where he was able to catch 17 to 19 pounds in the first hour. And he's really hunted that on days two, three, and here for the simple fact that he said, look, man, in practice, I, I could catch a 20 to 22 pound bag in the first hour and a half. And he said that that it's it's not transpired yet. <clears throat> yeah. And he thinks it's because the water's warmed up. Okay. Well, it certainly hasn't been like he's been riding high. He has been grinding. Mm. I mean, stressing over every hour of every fishing day out here, telling us, I think both days, hey, I'm going to have to put on a shaky hit. And go up he to did. the bank and catch a couple. Yeah, he was it not bad yesterday. I actually, we were goofing around on the phone last night, and I said, really, dude, you're going to throw a shaky head on Toledo Bend? He said, I was at that point. I was at that point mentally. That's not a relaxing day of fishing. So, is it a seabird? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. Thank Jerry Bassmaster Live. Seabird. 
the X factor. You remember that? No. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, you know, the whole year revolves around the thing with the year making the classic, and that's one of my, that's one of my personal goals, eventually to do, uh, to win one of those two, if not both of them. Um, I think the thing with the year deal is means you were the best that year all the way around all the way through um, and with these guys that I fish against I mean it's just a pretty amazing feat I mean it's been said a thousand times but you look at what Kevin's done he's a uh, he set the bar probably higher than anybody can climb I mean I just you know Everything, it's, it's almost like the dude was before the technology, you know. But, I mean, to win it would be wonderful. To make the classic again and stay up there would be a personal accomplishment. You know, I, I watch these guys and I see what they do, I don't try to imitate them, but I take a little bit of what everybody does and learn something. And the time I've spent around Kevin, you know, if you ever watch that dude manage what he's going on, I mean, he is, he is, he's always got something in his face, somebody wanting him to go here, somebody wanting him to go there. And, uh, he's been awesome to me since the first time I ever It was the first time I met him. It was weird, you know. At the first classic I around that I was in Van Damwich because I had I was like both 31 in between Duncan and Kevin. And uh, and then to show up that day there, <laughs> and then there he is with his entourage. Which, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty nerve-wracking. I mean, it's nerve-wracking for me just you know, getting to this point with this. It's another day for him. And, and like I said, you know, it's, it's just like another tournament. Only one person can win AOI. If there's ever been a tie, I don't even know how they would go about that but I'm not I'm not thinking about that I'm just thinking about being Hank and doing Hank and if you like it I'm glad you do if you don't this is But it's not my fault. Yeah, having a little trouble with our signals right now. The wind is blowing and all the cell towers are shaking a little bit. So uh, maybe it's going to calm down a little bit. Hopefully, we're going to get you some pictures of Kevin Van Dam because did I guess the reason. Did you say the cell? Oh, are shaking. They're shaking. They're shaking. The Sunday I, I love you, too. It's a Sunday <laughs> spell tower shakedown. We got going for you today, but we'll be back. We're not going to quit on it. Kevin, Kevin Van Dam gets out where he's uh, going eventually, guy. and we'll pick him up out there. Be right back. You're the X Factor. I am the X Factor. <laughs> Kevin Van Dam with 74 pounds and 12 ounces.
Boom shaka laka giant bass. Today, man, um, you know, I caught one pretty early this morning, and then then I caught an eight pounder. But then I, I mean, I couldn't catch nothing forever. So. Um, it was the hardest day, most stressful day I've had on the water in a long, long, long time. So uh, I'm thankful to have a, a really good bag. I mean, the bites that I was getting, at least they were really good. But, uh, you know, who knows about tomorrow? I'm, I'm just fishing by the seat of my pants. The ARE Truck Caps Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend is brought to you by Humminbird. Minn Kota. Skeeter Boats. Mercury. Hook. Nitro. And by Yamaha. I wake up in the morning and, and nothing else matters except where and when my first bite of the day is going to come. And we have so much going on in a tournament, getting gear ready, uh, in and out of the truck and the boat, prep and tackle, all that kind of stuff. And probably one of the you know most favorite pieces of, of gear or equipment that I've got is my ARE Z Series cap, ARE's premier model, and it's easy to see why. He's fished here for decades. He knows every hump, every drop-off, every contour. He's dedicated his entire life to understanding this single body of water. He didn't know squat about it until two hours ago. AutoChart Live lets you build your own high-definition maps anywhere in the world in real time. Only from Humminbird. The competition is fierce, and the prizes are huge. The only thing missing is you. Fantasy Fishing presented by Toyota. Sign up for free and face fans from across the nation. Grand prize winner receives a Triton Yamaha package, including a Triton 189 TRX, MSRP of $37,293. The classic and each individual elite event winner will receive $2,500 Bass Pro Shops gift cards, with the runner-up receiving a GoPro Hero 4 black camera. Sign up and pick your team today at BassmasterFantasy.com. Think you could win valuable prizes from Bassmaster? You can't know unless you enter, and entering is easy. Go to Bassmaster.com. Enter now for a chance to win a fishing trip with 2014 Geico Bassmaster Classic Champion Randy Howe. Trip includes airfare, hotel, rental car, and $500 cash, plus a Triton 17 TX bass boat with Mercury engine, and Randy's gear from Lowrance, Daiwa, Bass Pro Shops, and much more. You, the winner of a valuable prize, could be. All you have to do to get your shot is go to Bassmaster.com and enter today and every day. Hey, it could be you. You're watching the ARE Truck Caps Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend. Brought to you live by Toyota. Twelve anglers out there on Toledo Bend today. One of them's Hank Cherry. 
on the top five that we've got cameras on today. Very tough day to get television coverage in a very remote part of the world. But Looking we were, for the X Factor. We were quite lucky. A lot of these guys are going to remain sort of in the X Factor category until we uh, until we finally pick them up. But we have every hope. We were so lucky yesterday. Caught the top three guys. Awesome. Each one of them caught their big boom. fish. So uh, on and camera, no bite, so that's no good. Not that I have any <laughs> experience really punching mats, but I've heard them talk about it. <laughs> yeah, that's what they tell me. Right now, I am swimming a jig that is made by ER Lures out of North Carolina. A boy named Eric self ties them. It's a 9 16th. Um, I've got a Zoom white super chunk on the back of it. And I'm not trying to imitate the shad spawn per se. I'm trying to imitate what's feeding on the shad as far as the crappie, the bar bass, white bass, sockeye, that thing I caught yesterday, whatever those big bass might want to eat. Um, Just hitching it and swimming. Uh, or just passing real in like that. Down the middle, up and down. And it's good and poke when the big fish kind of getting that want to eat anything. Which is really, really awkward because. Well, I guess awkward's not a thing, or strange, because when they bite this thing, most of them hit it so violently. And you really don't expect that on a post palm most of the I choose 16th because it's easier for me to throw and skip. Uh, I know a lot of people skip docks with a lighter one. Half an ounce. Uh, quarter. And I've got a Get something. Hey, Cherry, having trouble with his segment, with his uh, signal right there, and, and, and then, Tommy, we do. We one thousand percent apologize right now. Oh yeah, we, yeah we've I mean, apologized. It's, a, it's the nine hundred and seventeen times in the last. <laughs> yeah. Does it make it any better? So that's, you know, that's that, when you we see something open up on there, please. Let us know, and I think you will, because we'll go out there to them. But that scoreboard we just saw right there, unofficial Bass Track scoreboard, it's looking more like, there it is right there. It's looking more like a one-man race right now, Kevin Van Dam upgrading again. And it's just, you know, he's opened up a pretty big lead over Chris Lane. Again, nothing that can't be that two casts couldn't take care of on Chris Lane's part. But, uh, man, he's, he's, he's the story. And until he gets out there where he's going to do his final setup and, and probably the rest of the day setup, we may not be able to see what he's doing. Well, you know, I, and look, I, gang, we want to be on the water with Van Dam as much as you do right now. No, no doubt about it. And every morning we've actually had a... <laughs> see, I ruined everything yesterday. I yeah, burned it all down. Sure did, yeah. um, there you go. That's what you do. <laughs> the, uh, the, every morning he's tried to keep... You know, he said that after the weigh-in yesterday to us. He said, man, if I could just get that shad spawn thing going and get myself in that 15 pound range to where I can go out there and not have to worry offshore. You know, the one, if you didn't, if you didn't uh, listen to what we said yesterday about Van Dam, he doesn't have the knowledge on Toledo Bend that he has on the Tennessee River sure. offshore lakes. You know, yeah. when, when Mark Menendez was hanging with us yesterday, you know, he has a rotation on Kentucky Lake of 65 offshore spots. Boom. If you look at his GPS, yeah, it's a polka dot right here. puzzle. Right here.
if you if you talk to him about fishing offshore here on Toledo Bend, he said, look, man, I, I've literally been practicing every day of this tournament during the tournament. Um, he doesn't have that expansive. Trying to uh, expand that. Yes. Yeah. You know, he's relied on his mapping to get him through this tournament. That is not a joke. Yeah. One thing Mark Menendez also reminded us, these these setups he's got out here, these few, these limited numbers, they're a, a way deeper deal than what you would find on Kentucky Lake, too. You know, and, yes. and, and just and that that sort of probably makes it harder to expand as well. Bass track KVD just caught his limit, a two pounder. What do we what do he's we got have? Five, but I haven't heard back from He's got five, we don't Thomas. know what they weigh though. Okay. 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 I'm guessing the live well weight of sixteen and a half is you know, and, 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 and the other side of it, Van Dam was very, 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 very concerned with uh, uh, you know, one of the things that that Menendez talked about. I actually talked to Davey Height about it last night. There, there, he's had a big armada of, and I did, man. I made the comment yesterday about some of the guys, you know, some of the boats that followed him that basically would GPS him. Uh, and then come back and play. Sure. Um, that's just it's part always of, happened. It's, it's it, you know it's again. Part of being Kevin Van Dam. And we watch a, a, sh a one-hour show, a, a condensation of this as we have in the past, and we get a little bit of that. Yeah. Of course, we watch it all day on I live, call the, I call and you see how much stress that causes. I called that person a cockroach. Okay. And there, I think there's a whole host of other names you could call that person. <laughs> okay. I'm just being dead serious. <laughs> sure. I, yeah. just, and look, anybody that yeah, would, they ruin it for everyone else. Anybody that and and, and like we said. 99% oh. of the spectators that follow these guys, they're fantastic. And look, Curtis, gang, great fishing fans. I get that this is a public lake. I get that whole thing. And it, and man, if it's your one day off to go bass fishing, dang it, go do it. You should do it. It's a public lake and you should do it. It's the group of people that lamprey eel themselves onto a big name just to take his spots and then join in after taking his spots. That's the person I'm talking about. Yeah, the disturbing thing was him having to, when he moved from one place to another, having to look back every 10 seconds and see what's and going see on them, at the place where he just left. And, and, and that's what I was getting at. The problem that he has had this week is right when he leaves, certain people would put their trolling motor down and start fishing immediately. Dude, to me, that's just not that cool. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, well, uh, what, it's, what do you think, Tommy? It's totally legal. It's completely legal. But, it's, you know, if you wanted to go in the grocery store down here and walk four inches behind someone for the rest of the day, <laughs> that's legal, too. I actually do that after Bassmaster Live. <laughs> that's why I brought it up, because it's, it is legal. I'm, I just want to say you're in yeah. good legal standing there. Well, I, I do that in other places, I was too. at a PGA event, and uh, after uh, somebody birdied, I grabbed my club and, and hit one under the green. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. Had to be a thrill. Yeah, I got kicked out. <laughs> I love you, Sue. I love the suit. But but that that's what we were talking about. Yeah. Yet. Look, hey man, here's the other side of it. If Van Dam pulls up to a spot and there's some guy fishing there that fishes the lake all the time, I get it. That dude's got every right to be there on earth. Sure. Absolutely. But if he's that guy that's been a uh, following all week, that's the uh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Have more confidence in yourself. Go find something else. Are you talking to me? Uh, no. You're talking to that guy. Bassmaster Live.
No, but I should have. Jerry threw in the swim jig a little a little earlier today, and the, but the, what he caught his biggest fish on yesterday, I think, is what he did that slip rig you were talking about. Can you run that down for us again? Uh, that that is the lowest profile bait we've seen among all our anglers. Three quarter ounce striking slither rig with a V and M J bug soft plastic on the back. He said he was using a cream craw also, but we haven't seen him use that much the last two days. It's predominantly been a V and M J bug. Uh, with that slither rig, you know, just a punch rig style deal. Lost a couple big fish yesterday doing that. He did do that. Just like Edwin Evers on day two. Best master alone. Again, if you're just tuning in, one of, the, one of the things Hank Cherry was looking for on these islands of trees and bushes, a, a lot of these islands have depressions that butt up against them that Hank Cherry would say was where a storm or wind would just make a depression that would butt up against just a couple of those bushes and make it where a lot of these bushes are in a foot and a half to two foot of water, um, there, there'd be a couple key bushes that would have maybe three and a half feet of water, and that's where a lot of his bigger ones came from. Such any luck on unofficially on on what his five bass way? No, sir. Is there anybody on Van Dam out there right now? Thomas Allen. I'm just texting him right now. I emailed him earlier, but he he's not responding to that yet. I'd like to know what Keith Combs yeah, and Andy Montgomery have been doing. They've had great tournaments. Combs has, you know, something Kevin actually told us after the day one way and about Combs. Here's a nugget for you, Such. Uh, Combs has been cranking the entire tournament, and unlike Van Dam, has been catching 40 to 60 keepers a day. Wow. Yes. Wow. Mm. Shot. I understand we're trying to get uh, no. Steve Bowman out there with Keith Combs. It'd be very interesting oh, to hear his report on that. What are your picks to win? One of my picks, and, and I'm doing you well. Of all the of all the guys I have been lucky and fortunate enough to be in a boat with, that dude's about as dialed in as anybody I've ever fished with. Very savvy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He's a home wrecker. <laughs>
Good to have you with us here Sunday morning. I wish we had more to offer you in the, in the way of pictures from out there on the lake. The weather conditions, the wind has changed. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm no scientist. I don't know how that affects the cell phone signal. It's shaking the tower. But, yeah, it's shaking the tower. But I, believe it or not, all these pictures are delivered via cell phone towers. They, they break up the picture into, uh, as I understand it, some component parts. They <laughs> split them up. They split them up to different towers and they send them back and it's reassembled here. Beam me up. Steve. You know, I think yeah, one of the best. That's think, maybe a terrible explanation. Exactly. It, it, it breaks up the whole the live stream. Yeah, very nice. like that. That's exactly good right. Summation. Such, what do you got for us? Nothing on KVD. Okay, we're going good here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Waiting for Steve Bowman to get out there with Keith Combs and. I don't know. It might be. Uh, how many times have we busted the century mark with the Bassmasters on Toledo Bend? Or have we? Be a good one for you, Such. I don't think we've I ever had all Toledo Bend winners, ballers. and none of them were over 100 yeah, pounds. Yeah. No. Well, I don't think anybody. Any, what is the what is the highest weight we've had here? Was that when Brent Chapman won? No. No? I don't think so. I think well, it was when there was 15 fish limit in 1970. I well, know everybody's I mean, hostile, but Tommy, there's no reason to be hostile towards me. Okay? I love No. You. Oh, I'm s <laughs> No, not, 20, not 2012. 1981, Roland Martin had 84.11 here. But of the most recent recent ones, it was Brent Chapman. And how much was that? 83. 83. Nine ounces. Right up there. Over that Back already. on the water. And that was in June. Oh, Hank Cherry. This is the 16th BASS event on Toledo Bend. Is that right? Did no. Rip Nunnery win here? No. No? Did not? No. Jack Haynes? No, no. sir. Huh. Surprisingly. John Murray? John Murray won here? Yes. Okay. Open Championship in yep, 2003. Yep, yep, David yep. Wharton? K David, oh, sure. He's a. Stacy King? Rest David Wharton's soul, one of the best yeah. men ever. Ever. Good angler. Ever. Who, who's won twice here? You know that. Almost won three times Dean here. Rojas. David Wharton? Da no, Rojas. Rojas, yes, 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 yes. Tommy Martin, Roland Martin, the Martin brothers. No, they're not brothers. Larry Nixon has won here. David Ward Wharton, Tommy, one of my fishing heroes. He's a great dude. Very, very. And he was a, more of a Rayburn guy, right? Lived out there in Rayburn. More, more of that whole region. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great so, dude. Yeah, very. Great dude. Very adept fisherman, very calm. Rayburn country. Yeah, Rayburn we, country. We went over to his house for a few dinners, remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice guy. Miss him a lot. I think the old legend Pistolaro Harold Allen was at a few of those dinners, <laughs> too, if you know No, one of the legends? Oh, yes, Love sir. Love that guy. Miss oh, him, too. Oh, my gosh. Wish we could coax him out of retirement. Josh, you're, you're not kidding. Do some fishing. It's my guy. I saw some photos from Toledo Bend last year. Um, wow, actually getting some getting some feedback. Mike Iconelli. Mike Iconelli is actually watching us right now, giving us ideas when the cameras lock up. <laughs> of what? Well, hey, I'll, well, I'll he, take him. He's a master of he's a master of live. I, absolutely, he's he's the champion. What's he say? I can't say anything he's texting. Not a single thing, trust me. <laughs> nope. Come on. No, Bring not it. at all. Paraphrase no. it. Uh, it would be anything you would guess Mike Iaconelli would say. Oh, my God.
talking about Keith Combs having a good day out there. Big limit, biggest limit of the day so far, as near as we can tell. And Steve Bowman is out there with him right now. Let's get out to Keith Combs. Uh, one of uh, one of Mark, uh, Mark Zona's big pre-tournament picks right that there. That was low-hanging fruit. That, well, well, yeah, it was, a, it was an easy pick. But uh, Steve, what do you see? What do you have to report from the Keith Combs area there? Well, I have to tell you, I haven't been on him very long, but but he's doing, you know, I, I, he's doing a lot really similar to what uh, Van Dam is doing. We're actually on the on the River Channel, um, and he's hitting some of these little uh, twists and turns and and that kind of thing. You know, just really good drops and and cranking along, and 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 he's got this whole area up to himself. And unlike Van Dam, uh, he's got four boats on him, and those four boats are like. Stay in uh, 200 yards from him, and and then he's got us. And I'm I'm actually with Dennis T.J., who's a uh, obviously a one of our league guys and uh, and a guide on this lake, so we can get around pretty easy. But uh, it's just classic post spawn setup, river channel, creek channel. Uh, you know, it, you know the same thing that Van Dam's doing, and uh, but he's got it to himself, and and it's obviously that's the difference. Uh, you know that uh, uh, I guess a lot of boats on Van Dam can make. When you have, if he was out here by himself, he'd probably be crushing them as well. So, Steve, that is great. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna come back to you uh, a little bit later. We now got some uh, Kevin Van Dam pictures up, and we uh, we yes. got something to show you also from Hank Cherry. So uh, stay there, hang in there, and, and and keep us posted, and we'll get back to you hopefully in just a little bit. Thank and, you, Steve. And, oh. Going to get back to Hank Cherry. This actually, believe this happened right, moments ago, right when we went to Steve Bowman. right there. Thank you. Care going early today. He's actually a little bit behind schedule from what he was on yesterday, about an hour earlier at this point yesterday. He had the first one in the boat, but that's a good one. Good keeper for Cherry. No doubt, no doubt. I think Van Dam is actually starting. Oh my gosh, the X Factor's up. All right, there we go. No longer the X Factor. Sheds, long hunts, walls, and bites this morning. All the boat traffic makes it tough to the walls to get those bits in there.
these eggs to step for them. Locked up tighter than a drum, Jack. A little difficult. On the, we're, we're a little early on the Kevin Van. I, I can guarantee it's going to get a little better today. It's got to. Easy. Knock, okay. knock on okay. something. All right. I, I no, was guilty no, yesterday. No. no. Okay. What time was it? 10.30, that big fish from Kevin mm -hmm. Van Dam yesterday? So we're all, all of his big shots fired have been 10 to 2 o'clock. There you go. Hands down. And he said, actually, his fifth fish yesterday was uh, closer to our takeoff, where he had caught some on day number one. He's just laying the groundwork now. Getting the best limit he can get in the boat before he heads out there to the deeper spots. Boy, he has stayed on the shad spawn way, way longer. Didn't I just today say that's where that one came from yesterday? <laughs> than yesterday and the day before. That Why do you think that is? I don't know. Yesterday he was cranking offshore within the first 60 minutes, mm, wouldn't you yeah. say? Oh, yeah. Quit on it pretty early. Had one fish in the boat. Yeah. One good one. I'll say that. Suits, do you know who Van Dam's cameraman is? I do not. Okay. It's Ben West Miller. Let me try it. Change try today, it. though. West may be out shooting the uh, shooting the beauty shot, shooting the running around, shooting the slow mo stuff. I wrote a piece on on leading with West and the cameraman called him Mueller the Cooler. They jokingly said they'd put him on the leader so it even up the, the odds maybe somebody could catch him. <laughs> that he was a bad luck charm. But that's not true. Wes came back with, no, look at it. I, I've had the highest percentage of winners. Wes is like the taboo in the Brady Bunch episode in Hawaii. What? Remember that? No. <laughs> Where there was a tarantula, a mirror was falling on people. Oh, it was a great episode. It was horrifying. Oh, man. I don't know how I missed that. Yeah, wow. Peter, Peter found a taboo. Fantastic. Well, thanks. We got us a fish catch for today. There it is, right there. Hank Cherry, and a good one too. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to contact Wes and see if we can get a ballpark of what Van Dam's got. <laughs> okay. okay. May or may not be Wes. We'll figure that out. Kevin Van Dam still working on his uh, on his uh, early bite there. Got a good limit early and a substantial lead. Trying to bring this one home. Four days in a row with the lead, trying to break the century mark as well. That would be a milestone for Toledo Bend and the Bass Masters. We've got a lot of stuff working today. Hopefully, we'll get more up and running for you when we can return. You're watching the ARE Truck Caps Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend, brought to you live by Toyota. 29 pounds, three ounces! Edwin Evers here, 2016 Bassmaster Classic Champion. In celebration of Lowrance winning the last five Bassmaster Classics, we're going to extend the ultimate upgrade promo. If you buy an HVS Gen 3 with Structure Scan 3D, we're going to mail you a $300 rebate. Five Bassmaster Classic Champions in a row. That doesn't happen by chance. That happens because these units are the best. Born to innovate, to find a better way. New Berkeley Hardbait. New designs. Trigger loaded actions. Mind blowing colors. 
because everyone wants to catch more fish. Your choice of fishing apparel can make or break your day out on the water. Added mesh vents for superior breathability. Moisture transport cooling technology to keep you dry and comfortable. And antimicrobial to keep you from smelling like your catch. With added SPF to keep you protected. We've added stain release to keep the blood or any other stains at bay. Our most technologically advanced fishing shirt for all the necessary dirty work. The ultimate predator has evolved again. Now, Yamaha VMAX SHO Performance is prowling the waters in four hungry, exciting new models. With their four valves per cylinder and double overhead cam fuel-injected design, these advanced four-stroke predators are taking performance to a whole new level. Vicious, lean, efficient. VMAX SHO, the pack is growing. Think you could win valuable prizes from Bassmaster? You can't know unless you enter, and entering is easy. Go to Bassmaster.com. Enter now for a chance to win a fishing trip with 2014 Geico Bassmaster Classic Champion Randy Howe. Trip includes airfare, hotel, rental car, and $500 cash, plus a Triton 17 TX bass boat with Mercury engine, and Randy's gear from Lowrance, Daiwa, Bass Pro Shops, and much more. You, the winner of a valuable prize, could be. All you have to do to get your shot is go to Bassmaster.com and enter today and every day. Hey, it could be you. The competition is fierce, and the prizes are huge. The only thing missing is you. Fantasy Fishing presented by Toyota. Sign up for free and face fans from across the nation. Grand prize winner receives a Triton Yamaha package, including a Triton 189 TRX. MSRP of $37,293. The classic and each individual Elite Event winner will receive $2,500 Bass Pro Shops gift cards. With the runner-up receiving a GoPro Hero 4 black camera. Sign up and pick your team today at BassmasterFantasy.com. You're watching the ARE Truck Caps Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend. Brought to you live by Toyota. Third hour of eight hours of fishing going on here on the final championship day. 12 anglers trying to win this fifth stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series at Toledo Bend. Legendary Toledo Bend. And we have a genuine all-time legend in the lead as he has been for the first three days of this tournament and to start today as well and maintaining it today and still filling out his limit shallow before he goes out deep, Kevin Van Dam. Uh, right now I have four fish. Um, I have one four and a half pounder, five pounder, and a couple of three, three and a halves and one little baby. So you can catch some big ones doing this, but the earlier the better. It's just so much, uh, you really need it to be pretty calm. There's so much boat traffic, um, then it bounces off these sea walls. Just makes it really hard to, to do it. This isn't bad right here. Some of the stretches are just getting hammered by the wind and you just can't, those fish can't sit up there shad are still around them, but they just don't get tight to where you can catch them. Maybe a little bit over, does not have a limit of fish yet. Okay. Uh. And 
of losing that signal right there. What would it? Yeah. I mean, you go ahead. You talk to him a lot. You 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 get a gauge of his feelings year to year. What uh -huh. would it mean to him to pick up a win here after a little bit of a for him uh, it's kind of a long interlude w without? I mean, he had such an unbelievable. Probably unbeatable string of wins. Twenty wins. Come on. I mean, what would it mean to him to win this one? I, I think. I think, in all honesty, I, if he won this tournament, it would be one of the biggest wins he's mentally had. I, I, he has no opinion. less desire to win than he had. No, before. no, 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 no. The desire is not there. It's just, you know, what Hank Cherry said. Uh, you know, I read what 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 Hackney said the other day. Van Dam's pulled in a million different directions daily. Okay, and 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 look. No way that that's old fish here, man. The, I just haven't put it through. Um, you don't you don't need to cry for Van Dam. He's obviously Absolutely done not. done fantastic. But when it comes to winning one of these, really with the demand yeah. on his time. Big one. Wow, Paul Mueller live. <clears throat> Don't you jump, Giants, dude. It's a school of Giants. We have updated Bass Track to show KVD with four for 11 and a half. Okay. So. And Chris Lane just got a lot closer to him. Oh my gosh. Five pounds. <clears throat> Yes! <laughs> oh, God. This is a this could be a winning school right here. Oh man, they're all big ones. How about that for number two? <laughs> oh. Yeah, easy. Good catch on a 10XD right there. Color was that spatterback color. He's been kind of alternating that from Citrus Shad. And really, he said he's been drop shotting a lot of fish, but he said for him to win this tournament, he has to lock that crankbait in his hand and never throw the drop shot. Well, two fish for 12 pounds, that's a pretty good uh, indication of the positive result you can get from doing exactly that. And he has been doing that all day today, as far as we've been able to see. What we've seen of Paul Mueller, of course, we got to know Paul Mueller at that 2014 Bassmaster Classic. Finished second in that classic to Randy Howell in that one and caught a huge limit. In Interesting that his suits, you were talking about this before we got on Bassmaster Live today, and he talked about it on the phone last night, said his, his primary strength is cranking. Yeah. That is very <laughs> odd from a Northeaster, I'm not going to lie. Very odd. Van Dam, or I'm sorry, Iconelli, another notorious there, there you go. Northeast cranker. There's a lot of bait here, and it looks like even maybe smaller fish like the yellow bass. Same type of deal. Well, Mueller obviously thinks he's on a pile of big fish that the winning limit could come from in there. So that is that is something that bears watching. I hope we can keep that signal up with Paul Mueller as long as we possibly can today. On the right, Hank Cherry just got his first keeper within the last 30 minutes. Eat it, aren't 
birthday? Just, that's the one I had laying on the deck all day yesterday. <laughs> Cherry been flipping a slither rig with a VM J Bug trailer. Looks a lot like where he caught his big one right there yesterday. Boy, it does, doesn't it? Now that you mention it. Rookie of the year back in 2013. Had a stupendous season back then. Shot at winning the Classic to start it off and won the big All-Star event at the end of the year. Certain. You know, it's it, the first morning I caught him really good that way, and it just seems like it's gotten tougher and tougher. But you know, we got four fish in the box, and uh, now we're going to fish in offshore places. So, see if we can get onto a school and get on get some of those big ones. You know, that's how I've caught my biggest fish have all come fishing like this, deep cranking, throwing a 6XD or an 8 or a 10. The biggest challenge out here today is, is boat positioning. A lot of these spots are they're really small where they sit. It takes you a while to get the right cast. She might need to come up here. It's boat wakes, and that's the, the beauty of having 25 guys following you. Cast is spot on right there. How do you know that? <laughs> well, my GPS has me sitting where I'm at, and I've got a line on the shore. Oh. Man, is it hard today. Look there, I had one, I got scales. I knew I had a bite there. It's gonna be on. Dang. Missed my cast.
pretty close right there. Casting's easy today. <laughs> I thought they would be chump. Good contrast to your leaders right there, Van Dam offshore cranking. See Hank Cherry, he's kind of dialed it up with docks. A lot of flipping throughout this tournament, and Chris Lane living with a topwater bait. But you also see a rise of Keith Combs, who we know is doing exactly what you see Van Dam doing right and here. Mueller too. Yeah. Both Combs is the spooky one. Okay. And Mueller, that's right. Yeah, yeah they're, they're all three doing the yes. same thing. Kind of nice, kind of reassuring to <laughs> to see that we're getting at least some pictures of what Van Ron, Dam's doing when he gets offshore. There. Ron Moore went and kissed yes. the cell tower line footage. Okay, feeder. All right, thank you. Welcome. Trick has uh, Chris Lane with a four pounder. Ish with a five. It's his second fish. Two more, and we got a ball game. Oh. I seen that one. I had just run over that one. I seen him right on the 
on the 2D on the Garmin. And I, I waypointed it, I backed off, made the cast, caught him. If I put this bait in, in front of one of these fish right now, I can get bit. It's so critical to take advantage of when they're biting because it can be a short window. You can get healthy really quick, but I've learned this week it's a short window. But the good thing is that we have wind. And for me, wind in practice was a lot more productive. When that wind lays down, they kind of just shut off. But when it's windy like this, they're active, they're feeding. That fish was a skinny fish. It just probably just got out here. Because you're not gonna take down, I mean, you need, you might need 40 pounds to take down Van Dam. My goal today was 30. I didn't know how it was going to happen. I knew it was possible. I mean, you know, all things are possible with God, and that's how I leave it off. That's, you know, you can see, it wasn't good on the first spot. It looks like it dried up. So you just, it is what it is, man. You just kind of, if it's going to happen, he's going to lead you to the fish. Having a hard time standing? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I'll try to fall in the boat. Well, the thing is, it's all relative to how clear the water is, too. This is a good spot right here. Had a bite right off the bat on that crankbait, and he didn't. Ooh, I just had one. Just had one, man, nip it. I mean, literally just nipped it. Ooh. I don't know if that was a bit or not. 